a reading from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. I tell you, be guided by the Spirit, and you will no longer yield to self-indulgence. The desires of self-indulgence are always in opposition to the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit The desires of self-indulgence are always in opposition to the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are in opposition to self-indulgence. They are opposites, one against the other. That is how you are prevented from doing the things that you want to. But when you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. When self-indulgence is at work, the results are obvious. Sexual vice, impurity, sexuality, the, and bad temper, bad, and quarrels, disagreements, factions, and malicious drunkenness, orgies, and all such things. And above these, I tell you now, as I have told you in the past, that people who believe in these ways will not inherit the kingdom of God. On the other hand, the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustfulness, gentleness, and self-control. No law can touch such things as these. All who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified self with all its passions and its desires. Since we are living by the Spirit, let our behavior be guided by the Spirit, and let us not be conceited or provocative and envious of one another. The word of the Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you another paraclete to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world can never accept, since it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he is with you, he is in you. I shall not leave you orphans. I shall come to you in a short time. The world will no longer see me, but you will see that I live, and you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever holds to my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what has happened that you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him and make our home in him. The Gospel of the Lord, Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us begin with the story. There was his supper, and he had plenty of seed. And he was a good seller, and he used to take care of the seal. Then he may sleep. During the daytime, he would leave the seal in the pastures and to give water. And then in the evening, he would bring all the seal and put them in that special place around the big fence so that no wild animals would attack them. One day in the morning he got up to see that all his sheep were there and to his shock he realized one sheep was missing. And then he checks the fence whether uh, the sheep had gone through the fence and he found a little hole there in the fence through which his sheep had gone away. So in that direction he ran and then after a long distance you know, he manages to find his sheep. But he sees uh, a wolf following the sea, and the makeup time he goes and sees his sea, and then gently uh, lays it on his shoulder and comes back and leaves it with other sea. And the, the neighbors come to know that's what had happened, they come and tell the the shepherd, uh, sorry, we heard that the sheep had run away, but that he managed to find a happy. Also, they tell me, come on, we will repair that fence so that the other sheep would not go away. But this shepherd tells that, no, I'm not going to repair that. It will be like that. The sea are free to remain here or to go away. And the people all said, What a strange serpent it is. Strange serpent. No. We also would say the same, it's a very strange serpent. Because 
a normal shepherd would prepare the fence for the other seed in the road. It is in that, I'm going to say, God is like that strange shepherd. He knows that his people be. Some of us who can try to be close to him. And uh, some of us never then go astray. Of course, nothing would happen to God the shepherd, he's all powerful. But uh, we would put ourselves in risk in nature we go away from him. <coughs> Yet he gives us freedom. Like that shepherd, freedom. So that is, we have to understand why God would give us that freedom. I think, basically, if a person loves, then a person is free. True love never can force anything. We don't find any compulsion in true love. If God, God is love, that's what St. John in his first letter says, God is love. He's full of love. And he can he cannot compel us. He cannot compel us. He gives freedom. We have freedom to remain close to Him and to grow physically, mentally, spiritually, when we live according to His commandments. This particular retreat is called growth retreat. No, it's the integral growth, integral means the whole person. We want to grow the whole person, body, mind, and spirit. Now, when we remain close to Him and live according to His words, then there is that integral growth, body, mind, and spirit. However, we choose to go away from Him, then that integral growth cannot be achieved physically, mentally, and spiritually can be affected. Yet, He gives God His freedom. So the question is, in this world, how to grow as God's children? How to grow integrally? Like body, mind, spirit, how to grow? The only answer is we need to continuously listen to God and His Spirit. Now, when we talk about God's Spirit, we are aware of the essence of God's Spirit. Some people may have the wrong idea. God's Spirit is very far, maybe up in heaven. No. But Jesus says in today's gospel, that is taken from John chapter 14, Jesus says, was 15 and 16, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I said, ask the Father and He will give you another parenthood to be with you forever, to be with you forever, not only when we come to the chapel, not only when we are praying, to be with you forever. God's Spirit is with us forever. We need to be aware of Whether we are in the chapel, at home, in the office, in the road, traveling, or we are all in the road. God's Spirit is with us. To be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. Spirit of Truth. There is a Spirit of Lies. Who is that? Jesus. Jesus would say, God creates, who is a liar from the very beginning. Okay, Satan. But Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. <coughs> Whom the world can never have said. Since it neither sees nor knows sin. But Jesus says to his disciples, You know him. Why? Because he is with you. 
and he says, he is here in you, verse 17. He is with you and he is in you. Do you realize that? God's spirit is with us, he's in us. He's in us. And not only the two times, not only the little sweet practice and the little sweet confirmation, or when we are in the chapel. He says, forever, to be with you forever, and he's with you, he's in you. And since the Spirit is in you, you shall never be orphans. That's what he says. But I shall not leave you orphans, because we are not alone. God's Spirit, he says. And when we say God's Spirit in us, that's not the only God's Spirit, Holy Spirit in us, Father and Son and somewhere far. You know, about Holy Trinity, we cannot divide them. We cannot say, the Holy Spirit is here, and Father is elsewhere, the Son Jesus is elsewhere. The Holy Trinity is always together, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus speaks about this presence of the Holy Trinity in us, just a little later on. Now, verse 23. Anyone who loves me will keep my word, and a Father will love him. And we shall come to him and make a home in him. Let us note that once again. Anyone who loves me, that's the second verse of Trinity, Jesus is telling, will keep my word. And my Father will love him, the first verse of Trinity. And we shall come to him, we, but I will live. Or he will live. We, the Father and I, come to him and make our home in him and make a home in make a home in we come to stay in us. So we understand how pleased we are. The whole Trinity lives in us. The Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. What do you think we need to become aware of that presence of this Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. Many times we are not aware of that. In the case of the sea, that went astray from the sea fold, because of the animal, animal, okay, the presence of God's Spirit is not there. Maybe, okay, everything is in the presence. God is present everywhere that way. But in us, the presence of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity is in us. So we cannot easily go astray. That is the reason go astray. That's the case. But to look at the reality, still, we sometimes go astray. Still, some people go astray. And that's the sad part of it. Some people will say, the are say, only God Christians will go astray or... No, they are Christians. Even it can be some as priests, it can be bishops. So what is important is, in spite of the presence of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit in us, still people sometimes go astray. Why? It's a big question. Because, yes, because the liar, the spirit, the, 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 the lying spirit, Satan is there always to tempt us. To tell us, come on, you don't listen to the Holy Trinity. You don't listen to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You don't listen. Listen to the world. Listen to the attractions of the world. The attracts of the flesh. Seek for worldly pleasure. You know, that, that's what the, the, the spirit of lies. Now, Satan will be continuously telling us. But one good thing is, uh, Satan cannot come by living us. Let's be clear about that. Only God works in us. 
Satan will be always outside. You know, in the book of the Bible, John chapter 1, the first letter of St. John, he says, One who is within you is greater than one who is outside. One who is within you is greater than one who is outside. Who is within there is the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is greater. And one outside, the evil spirit. He has power, the evil power. Satan has power, but God is at me. Great, great, much greater power than the evil spirit. Yeah. <coughs> so, the thing is, uh, the one who is within you is greater than the one who is outside. So, uh, only thing, the evil spirit puts things in such a way, it looks very attractive. Very attractive. Take the case of Adam and Eve. Uh, already they were in grace in the Garden of Eden. Everything was there. But the evil spirit does not want human beings to have that group that God wishes. Body, mind, spirit. So it comes with a life. What's the life? God. You want to become like God? Just eat this food which God has said no. Meaning, you go against God's plan. That's the way. You will listen to only your own human desire. The passion of your own human will. You listen. And we are told in Genesis chapter 3, you know, the way, about the fall of your spirits. The food looked and trapped you. And the world saw the lion, Satan, which comes in the form of Satan, look more attractive, you will become like God. That's how temptation is very attractive. That's why people fall in it. Even though God's spirit is living in us, people choose to listen to the lion, the spirit, the evil spirit, Satan, which is also a and the evil spirit, how does it influence us through our five senses? Seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, <coughs> tasting. So, to, to eyes, maybe mobile, maybe TV, internet, pornography, maybe, what's the thing for? To eyes, it attracts us. Tells us to go against God's will. To hear, hearing things which are not according to God's words. To touch which is not according to God's plan. Tasting food. Tasting food sometimes when people are going home. What do you mean? So, the evil spirit attracts us to our five senses. And the five senses includes our thinking, The way we think, the way we feel, it improves the feeling. Then we come to have a little feeling, hatred, passion, or lust, all of things. So it's through the five senses that the, the tempter tries, tempts us, and tells us to go against the spirit of truth, God's Holy Spirit, in us. And sometimes we can see which goes astray. Anyway, so I will leave as they want, like that little seed, no? 
e chiede che il luogo è più perfetto. No. We have the responsibility. Come the responsibility? We do the discernment of spirit. Sometimes we may think, oh, this is best for me. Our, our thinking may say, our desire may say, oh, this is the best. But I need to ask, is the ideal good for me or would it apparently be good for me? So the, the, the importance of making this distinction. Truly good, apparently good. Truly good, when God is revealed by God's Spirit, apparently good, many times, a fully apparently but not truly good, when the evil spirit is spirit of life. So we have to make a discernment. And how to make discernment? The first reading is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Now, what Satan flesh means works of the evil spirit. Walk of the Holy Spirit. Walks of the evil spirit. What are they? Hatred. Malice. Evil. Lust. Quarreling. Hatred. Taking revenge. Not forgiving. Bitterness. Giving bitterness. Because the more we keep these things, they are growing. They are putting up several children. Spirit. 
respiratory and to grow physically, mentally, and spiritually. We may have to be for the conclusion.
It is similar to the Russian picture the Chinese and was so many times. He gave his disciples saying, take this over few and drink from it. For this is the Chinese of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the body of me. Jesus Christ. 